Wait up, Sergeant Smoker. What is it, Colonel? I told you, Sergeant. Call me Bobby. We were at Bragg together. Remember? Back in AIT? Of course I remember it. It was the toughest school I've ever been through. Airborne. Listen, we're obviously here in Syria because the U.S. Army had to send in PSYOPs, the tip of the spear. I want to make sure that you are ready for what we might be facing out there. Of course I am, Colonel. I mean, Bobby. I'm a non-commissioned officer, backbone of the Army. There's no one more professional than I, goddammit. All right, at ease, soldier. I want to know if you are ready in case this top-secret mission all goes to hell. I want to know if you remember the fundamentals, the real heart of your training. What are you talking about, Colonel? I want to know if you remember how to call up a nine-line medevac. If need be, I'll contact our FOB using my PSYOPs, powers of persuasion. Stand back and watch this. Stop it, Smoker. You know we can't use our PSYOPs powers unrestricted like that in this environment. I took the liberty of printing up this handy guide to help you remember the steps of calling up the nine-line medevac when the time comes. Awesome. I know. And since we have time before we get to the village up ahead, we were going to do our top-secret PSYOPs mission. And I thought it would be best if we took the time to review the steps. That is a really good idea, Colonel. Well, let's get started. <laughs> You're the real deal, Smoker. Now listen here. When calling in a medevac, there are several steps that an individual must take to ensure the 9-line is properly called in, and dispatch units are given the necessary information required to reach the patient's location. Okay, what are the steps? Glad you asked. Step 1. Return fire and render the scene safe. Before attempting to call in a 9-line medevac, the scene must be rendered safe. Personnel should not reduce the overall efficiency of the force's firepower, firepower to call in a 9-line. If the unit under fire reduces the overall aggression and violence of action against the enemy force, it could result in a greater loss of personnel. At all costs, the firefight must be won before moving towards rendering aid to the wounded. That makes perfect sense. What's next? It's Step 2. Care under fire. Once fire superiority has been established, medical personnel can begin care under fire. In this step, medical personnel and medically trained operators can begin to tend to life-threatening wounds while maintaining security. Ranger that, Colonel. What's the next step? It's step three, Sergeant Smoker. Determine number of patients by type. This is not only important information to have when calling in the 9-line, but it will also allow the medical personnel to properly triage patients based on their medical condition and chance of living. In this step, critically wounded personnel are identified and consolidated in the event that there is limited space in incoming medevac platforms. Holy fuck, this is all starting to come back to me from my Army Reserve training. It should be. The U.S. Army Reserve has some of the greatest warrior training available to civilians who are looking to advance their careers and get money for college. Stay reserve, stay strong. They're born. Step 4. Contact Medevac Channel. While rendering the scene safe is important, getting the medevac out is also extremely important. Medevac units will have a varied response times, but giving them notification of the situation as soon as possible will help reduce their time to station. If the operating element has a BFT, this should be hit up as soon as possible to let the supporting units know of the emergency taking place. Again, operating personnel should practice radioing for help as part of their response to an attack. Sounds good, Colonel. When do we actually get to call in a 9 line? It sounds like there's a hell of a lot of work before you even call one in. Don't rush through it, Smoker. Slow is smooth. Smooth is fast. Remember your high-speed days back at Fort Jackson, and it all should start to make sense. Step 5 is using the 9-line medevac format to call in the medevac. The first five lines are the most important when calling in a medevac. The other four can be relayed when the birds are in the air. Ensure you have a safe LZ for the landing party. Smoker, 
This is important. No matter what the situation on the ground, the radio operator should remain calm and collected at all costs. Personnel calling in a medevac while in a state of panic re may relay incorrect information or speak in a manner that is incomprehensible over the radio. Remember, responding units will not come any faster if the RTO is calling the 9 line in an excitable manner. To ensure the 9 line is properly called in, the operator should consider writing down the information to ensure all pertinent information is passed. Incredible information, Colonel! Let's review the steps in the 9 line medevac to be sure we have them all down correctly. Line 1. Location of pickup site. Now this is given in a 6 to 8 digit grid. Line 2. Frequency and call sign at pickup site. This is the frequency and call sign that you will be talking to the incoming medevac aircraft on. In most cases, this is a predetermined, non-encrypted channel that is set aside for medevac. If possible, write this on all 9-line cards prior to mission. Perfect! I understand! Line 3. Number of patients by precedence. First is urgent. That means it requires in-flight surgeon to perform surgery while en route to the hospital. Urgent non-surgical. The patient has an arterial bleed that can be stabilized until arrival to the hospital. Priority. That means that injuries are not immediately life-threatening, but could become life-threatening eventually. Next is routine. Patient requires regular medical care, but unit cannot transport them by their own means. The last is convenience. Non-life-threatening care provided to personnel in a combat zone. Line 4. Special equipment required. First one is none. Second, B is hoist. Third, extraction equipment, such as a jungle penetrator. And the last is ventilation. Line 5. Number of patients by type. First one is litter. This means that they cannot walk on their own. B. That would be ambulatory. Able to self-move to Venevac platform. Line 6 is security of pickup area. N. That means no enemy troops are in the area. P. That stands for possible enemy troops in area. Approach with caution. E. Enemy troops in area. Approach with caution. And the last one is X. Enemy troops in area. Armed escort required. Huh. I see where you're going with this. Next one is line 7, method of marking at pickup site. Now listen, always ensure marking equipment is available to the marking personnel. If you're going to throw purple smoke, ensure that you have purple smoke on hand. Alright, first one is panels, such as the VF-17 panel. Next is pyrotechnical equipment, such as a pen flare or red star cluster. Next one is smoke signal. Remember to provide the smoke signal that you're going to be dropping. D is none. E is other, such as an IR flash or a beacon. Line 8. Patient nationality and status. A is U.S. military. Next, B is U.S. civilian. Moving on, non-U.S. military. Fourth option, non-U.S. citizen. And the last is E, EPW. This all looks good. Closing it off, line 9 is NBC contamination. A is for nuclear. B is biological. C is chemical. Remember, during peacetime, provide terrain of pickup site. Remember, Sergeant, training to send in the 9 line is important for all personnel on the ground. You never know when you may be calling in a medevac, and you never want to wait until the situation to take place to figure out that you're unable to call it in properly. Roger that, Colonel. God bless America, and I'll answer Charlie Mike to the village and complete the PSYOP missions.